All right, hey physics uh, C, this is Horner, and we're looking at 2002 AP Physics C Mechanics number three. Uh, you have an object of a mass 0.5 kilograms. It uh, experiences a force that has a potential energy function of u to the x is 4 over 2 plus x, where u is in joules and x is in meters. On the axis below, they want us to sketch ux versus x. So probably the easiest thing to do is just kind of go through and pick out some values here. Um, if we start at a potential energy equal to 2, okay, um, yeah, so we start at 0, we're going to end up with 2, obviously. So 0, 4 divided by 2 is going to give us 2. Uh, let's move over to 1. If we plug 1 in, that would give us 4 thirds. Uh, so that's going to be somewhere about right here. Uh, if we do 2, obviously that's going to give us 2. Uh, so we're going to plug in... Uh, we're going to plug in 2 here, so that's going to give us 1, sorry, and that value is here. If we plug in 3, uh, now we're going to get uh, 4 fifths, um, and so we're just a little bit less there. And then if we do 4, we're going to get uh, uh, 4 sixths, which is going to be 2 thirds, which is somewhere about here. And then if we do 5, we get 4 sevenths. And so that's just here because 4 eighths would be half. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what we end up with. And then uh, you want to definitely do a nice flowing curve from one point to the other. Don't disconnect the dots. Make sure that you have some sort of curve there. Um, so once you have that done, you should get three points for just plotting that, putting that curve in. Uh, your intercept should be here. That's one of the points as long as you have this upward facing curve. You get a point, and then uh, for the U value at 5 to be in between 0.5 and 0.75 is really what you want. So that gives you all the points. Now, the next part of this problem is um, ask you, it says, determine the force associated with the potential energy function given above. To do that, we're going to have to do a lot of different things. And probably the biggest part here is this is probably uh, some of the harder calculus that you're going to have to do dealing with derivatives. You can't just put f is equal to change in u over change in x. So if you say f is equal to uh, negative delta u over delta x, and it's negative because of the function uh, sweeping down, um, they will not give you credit for that. You actually have to use the calculus version. So f is equal to negative du over dx. That was hard. Uh, that's where you get, um, you actually get two points for that. Um, you get two points because you also need to have the negative. So one point for the negative, one point for using the calculus version of what you see here. Now uh, we need to take the derivative of the potential function. So uh, determine the force, we've got to find the derivative of that potential function. So f is going to be equal to negative d over dx, and that is uh, 4 over 2 plus x. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated because we're going to need to use some other rules when we do this one. So let me just kind of take you through to the, the derivative of this. So right now what we have is we need to do d over dx of 4 over 2 plus x. First thing that you do is you take the 4 and you move it to the front. So this is the constant in this equation. It's on the top. We're deriving really the bottom more than anything else. So this becomes 4 d over dx times, now we're going to put 1 up here, and we're going to do 2 plus x. Um, so now we've got that. We're also going to modify this. Uh, this is still going to have a negative out front. So this is going to be equal to negative 4d over dx, and we're going to make this 2 plus x, and we're going to put a negative 1 here, because really, um, we want to be able to apply uh, the power and the chain rules for these. Um, now we're going to have to apply something called the chain rule. And the chain rule is on your equation sheet. It says df, and it has a u here, over dx is equal to df over du times du over dx, where u is going to be equal to our 2 plus, oops, not times, but 2 our plus x. So u here is our 2 plus x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have 4d over du, OK? 
okay, times, and then we've got this 2 plus x to the negative 1, and then we're going to do d over dx, and this is going to be 2 plus x. Uh, we need to do this side first, so we're going to do the derivative here. I've got to remember that negative there. We are going to do the derivative of this, and then we're going to do the derivative of this. So if I do the derivative of this, I'm going to, uh, anytime I have, um, so we'll put this up here, d over du, u negative 1, the derivative of this function is going to be negative 1 over u squared, because all we're doing is just squaring this. Um, uh, you're just adding another negative to it, so that puts it on the bottom. And so here we're going to put in negative 4, and then we should have, uh, this will become negative 1 over u squared is going to be 1 over 2 plus x, or here we go again, 2 plus x, and then this thing would be squared. Uh, and then we just do the regular derivative of this. Well, if we do the regular derivative of this, x to the 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, so then uh, the 2 goes away because there's no x with it, so this becomes 1. And so now we've got this guy, and we're just going to simplify it by just putting the x in front because that's more standard notation. Put the 4 on the top, so this would be 4 over x plus 2, and on the bottom we have the squared. So um, for this problem, I know it's a little bit more complicated, but this is what we're going to get. Um, now the problem is, is we can't have the negative sign in the equation anymore. So this force is going to be equal to 4 over x plus 2 squared. The force is not negative in this, the force is positive. So we've got to be really careful here. Uh, it is the negative du over dx. But in the end, that makes this whole thing positive. Even though the calculus says this is what we get, we're going to make sure that we don't include the minus sign um, uh, in this. Um, you really can if you want to, I guess. But we're just going to leave it out because we're just looking for the pure force itself. Having the negative would not be a big deal. But uh, not having it is going to make it a little bit easier to do some things later. All right, so the next part of this they want us to uh, suppose that the object is released from the rest at origin. Determine the speed of the particle at x is equal to 2 meters. So if we remember, the change in potential energy is equal to the potential energy at 0 minus the potential energy at 2 meters. Uh, and that should be equal to the speed, uh, the kinetic energy, which includes our speed, which is 1 F mv squared. Uh, U at 0 is 2 joules, uh, and then U at the 2 meter mark uh, is 1 joule, and whoops, I'm just going to put 1 joule there, and that should be equal to 1 half of 0.5 kilograms times our speed squared. Uh, 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, half of 5 is 0.25, so this is equal to 0.25 times v squared. Uh, if you go ahead and do your math, you should get v is equal to 2 meters per second, and that's our speed. Uh, the next part says, in the laboratory, you're given a glider of mass 0.5 kilograms on an air track. The glider is affected by the force determined in point in part B. Your goal is to determine experimentally the validity of your theoretical calculation in part C. So we want to know how good is this. So to do that, uh, we've got to go through and look at the list of equipment that they give us, and they want us to figure out from the list below, select any additional equipment that we need to, my, to do my experiment, and then check the line next to each item. If I need more than one, place the number I need on the line. Um, so really, the things that you need here are, are pretty easy to use. Um, you don't want to check all of them. If you check all of them, it won't work out real well. If you just check certain things, you've got to make sure then in part E, you use those things. So I'm not going to check anything here. I'm going to show you three different 
methods of trying to uh, to do this. And so to do that, I'm actually going to drag over the answer key because I think that makes it a little bit easier to see. So here you could use a photo gate. So if you use a photo gate, you definitely want to check on the other thing that you're using the photo gate. Um, near x equals 2 meters and a small distance apart. Uh, measure the distance between the photo gates. So to do that, you're going to need a meter stick. So, so far we've just checked the meter stick and we have checked the uh, photo gates. Um, it says measure the time it takes. So we go back over here and we definitely need a stopwatch. So meter stick, stopwatch, photo gate, timer. Okay. Uh, if it's a photo gate timer, we really don't need the stopwatch. So we could probably uncheck that if we wanted to. Um, and then it says uh, measure the, the time the glider takes, attain the speed. Uh, notice that they don't give any points if the distance measured was 0 to 2 meters and the time the travel of 2 meters was used, so you can't do that. Using the spring, uh, you could say the spring constant, the spring is known, or if not, then measured. Set it up at x equals 2, it's uncompressed when it's struck by the glider measure the compression, then the velocity can be decided by this. We've done this before in some previous problems. And then treating the glider as a projectile, you could do that uh, so that the starting point is at 2 meters at the end of the track. The glider leaves the track and becomes a projectile. The height of the track determines the time that it's in the air, and then the distance from the end of the track would then be the velocity is computed by using that distance that it, that it flies across in the time that it takes to fall, that would give you the velocity. So um, that, those are the ways to do this last problem um, to determine the speed. You could do any of the three. I really think that that third one's the easiest where you're treating as a projectile because now you're going to just say uh, you're going to find dy is equal to 1 half gt squared. So our time here is just equal to the square root of 2 times d times g. Uh, that distance in the y times g. Once you do that, then you could just say x divided by the square root of 2 dyg uh, would be equal to your velocity in the x direction. And I think that is really all you need to do for this problem.